Yo, what's good guys? It is JD here. Hello and welcome to a, another video, but for the first time ever, not a 2K video on this channel, which feels very weird to be making. I don't have a controller in my hands, which feels very weird, but we are here today with a video that obviously I wish I'd never had to make, but it's a little bit of a story time that a lot of you guys have asked for. So over the last few weeks, my car got stolen, it then got used in burglaries, and it then got found. And I love that car. I'm really big into my cars. If you guys don't know, obviously gaming is like life for me, literally. Uh, but outside of that, cars and motorsports, all of that type of stuff, I am very much involved in. And I had a very nice, very modified car that was very nice and fast and loud. And uh, yeah, sadly, it got stolen and then everything else happened. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to break down. That's a TLDR, but we're going to break down uh, exactly what happened with my car, like when I bought it, what mods I actually did to it, and the stages that I went through to get it to where it was right at the end. Along the way, I'm going to show you guys pictures, and we'll have a couple of videos and sound clips and whatnot that I took throughout the years. And then we've got some pictures of it after it was used in the burglary, because I actually went to the police pound place site uh, where they had forensics teams working on it. I was there, I was able to see the car in its final state, and uh, yeah, it was very, very sad. So it's been a rough couple of weeks, so if I've been a little bit off in videos, that is why. Thankfully, things are kind of at an end right now, like I've been paid out for my insurance, that's all sorted, the car was officially a write-off. Uh, it's up for auction right now, so somebody in the world is going to be buying that car, uh, but I don't think it's going to be me. And if you guys like this type of videos, then if I get a new car, if I get a new car, when I get a new car, I can definitely do some type of vlog if you guys want to see what I'm going to pick up next. But right now, I'm probably going to be buying the same car, but in a different colour and a newer version, because the cars are just so good. So, let's take it back to where it all started. I bought the car in... October 2018, so about two and a half years ago, I bought the car. It had 20,000 miles. It is a red Ford Fiesta ST3, so it's a top-line model. It came with a roughly 180 brake horsepower. That's what they come with out of the factory. They have like an overboost feature, which takes it to 200, but most of the time, people just say it's an ST180, and it was brilliant. I'd come from a silver Golf that wasn't very good and wasn't very powerful, and it was my first like big purchase of my life. Uh, I didn't finance it or anything like that, I just bought it outright with my own money that I'd worked for, so it took a lot to get to where I wanted it to, but it was like a crazy good car, I was so so happy with it, and I was really happy with it for about eight months, and then in June 2019 I decided to ramp things up a bit, make it a little bit louder, and put a cat back exhaust on it. <laughs> Which, you know, they ain't cheap. It was done by a very, very good uh, uh, manufacturer or product place. It was uh, Miltech Exhaust, which if you guys know anything about cars, you know they're a very respected brand. So put that exhaust on it, which made it a little bit louder. And at the time, I thought that's all it needed. I thought, you know, it's a great car, but it's a little bit quiet. So I've put an exhaust on it, make it a little bit louder. I'll be happy forever. But once you start modding a car, you kind of can't stop. So then in November 2019, so a few months later, I went ahead and did a stage one remap to the car. Now, if you guys don't know anything about cars, basically you can program the ECU, which is like the brain cell of the car. You can program that and tell it to do more things. Like it's not just one engine does just one thing. You can tell it to do different things. So... Uh, I bought a map, which was a stage one remap, which took it from 180 up to 220-ish brake horsepower and a big increase in the torque figures as well. And I was actually doing that myself. So they send over the files, or the company that you buy the map from, they send over the files to you, you then put it on your laptop, you then plug your laptop into the car and then have to go ahead and like turn it off and on when it tells you to, leave it 10 seconds and turn it off, wait like a minute, etc. You have to do all these things. So you do it yourself, you map it yourself, which is pretty cool and pretty exciting that you can do that yourself. And I had all the files on my laptop. Obviously, I've still got them. Not that they're useful for anything now. Uh, but yeah, that bumped up the power. And then I had a little bit of a faster car and obviously a louder car as well, which was very nice. But then, like I said, you know, when you get the bug, you get a bug. So January 2020, so literally like two months later, I decided to go ahead and change the aesthetics of the car just a little bit because we changed the speed, I changed the sound, but it still looked basic, still looked like a basic bitch, and I didn't want that no more, so I went ahead and got all four wheels refurbed and painted in gloss black, or coated in gloss black, which I think looks brilliant, it goes with the red so well, I also got black wing mirror caps as well, so really going on the black aesthetics of the car, and I thought that made it look sick, and I still do to this day, I still think it looked really, really good, and again, those things aren't cheap man, getting all four wheels like refurbed and coated, that is not 
cheap, but hey, we did it. And then I also got myself a carbon fiber gear stick, which again, is cheap, might be a little thing, but for me, it just made the car unique to me. You know, I don't think many people around here have cars like that. I live in a tiny little village mostly old people they don't have cars like that and even in my county people don't really have cars like that so it was just making it unique it was making it mine and i felt like i was doing that along the way with all these mods which were you know reasonably tastefully done then march came around i had a busy start to last year then march came around and i went ahead and had an induction kit fitted to it and a short shifter so a short shifter basically reduces the throw between gears so it reduces how far the gear stick has to travel before it hits a gear so it just makes it easier to get through the gears really quickly so you can go faster quicker so you can be in gear longer which gives you more power so that's why i did that and again that's just a really cool like sporty thing that i did to my car which i was really proud of uh, i then had the induction kit at the same time which again just increases the amount of air that gets pushed through to the turbo so it gives you a little bit more power but the main thing it does it just sounds awesome it does like the whoosh noise coming out of the uh, turbo intake sounds brilliant so i had a great noise coming out the front with the induction kit I had a great no noise coming out the back with the exhaust I had my short shifter I had my gear stick I had the remap, it was looking very nice. But then in May, I decided to take things to another level. So with uh, any modded card, really, there's, there's a lot of stages. You know, stage one is your basic. We don't really need any extra hardware to be able to do it. It's just one bit of software and that's it. But then you move up, stage two, three, four, etc. You need quite a bit of hardware around it. So for stage two on a Fiesta ST, you do need the induction kits. We already had that, so that was a box ticked. ticked. But then we needed an intercooler and a sports cat, which I went ahead and put on it in May last year, along with the stage two remap, along with a body kit as well. So the body kit, first of all, black front splitter, black side skirts, black rear spats and rear diffuser fins. And again, the black and the red just looks so good. And I couldn't have been happy with how it looked. It looked so damn good. And it still does to this day, because that is technically still on the car you know it hasn't been sold yet so it's still on the car at the lot where it's being auctioned or whatever so that still looks great and i'm still really really happy with that uh, and then in terms of the actual hard stuff that we put on the car intercooler you know more power you need more cooling to the engine because you put more power through it. it's going to get hotter you need to be able to cool it more so you need an intercooler which we put on it and then the sports cat needs to go on because the standard cat uh, that comes on like any car can't actually handle the amount of power and exhaust fumes that are getting pushed through it so you have to change that out to be able to deal with the power so that came out sports cat went on and then the stage two remap went on as well which again was done by me and that pushed it up to 250 brake horsepower so from where i bought it at 180 went ahead pushed that out by 70 up to 250 which is quite a big improvement and quite a big jump and it was pretty much where I wanted it to be. That, that happened May last year, and then I only did one more thing, which is arguably the maddest thing that I did to it, which was in August last year, we went ahead and swapped out that sports cat and put a decat on it, which uh, a lot of you guys know is just like basically a straight pipe. So it just goes straight through, and that meant that I could have flames coming out of the exhaust. All right, go for it. <laughs> So I have my stage two flame map, which is like an official thing that they actually gave me, which is brilliant. And uh, yeah, if I revved it like reasonably high, it would shoot flames out of the back and you could look in the rear view mirror and you could see little flashes of light as the flames came out of the back. So that was brilliant. And August 20, 2020, that was actually the last mod that I actually did to the car, uh, which is sad. So it was exactly where I wanted it to be. I didn't really have any plans for anything else. Stage three would have been another tur or a different turbo going on it. And I also needed a bigger intercooler again. So that would have been cost like a lot. So I didn't even have any plans for that. The car was exactly where I wanted it to be. I'd taken it from absolutely bone stock. Uh, I'd driven it for 30,000 miles over two and a half years. So I got it at 22,000 miles, I think. And when it got stolen, it was at 49,700. And that brings us on to when it was stolen. So we're in a lockdown here in England, or maybe we're not right now. I don't know the rules, but uh, I only go out of the house one day a week. I go to my girlfriend's house one day a week and we've been bubbled since the start. So it's absolutely fine. But I park at hers outside on the road one day a week. And one day I woke up and her dad said, 
Josh, your car isn't there. And I was like, what do you mean? Of course it's going to be there. Now, if you guys don't know, I have contact lenses. So in the morning, obviously, I don't sleep in my lenses. In the morning, I'm basically blind. So I'm like, let me just actually put some eyes in so I can see, had a look. And yeah, my car had gone. So obviously rang the police first of all, then rang the insurance company. And then was just like, what? has happened here. I went down to all of her neighbours, knocked on the door to see if they had any CCTV to see what happened. One person did, but it took them a few days to get the CCTV, but we'll come to that in a second. And then it was just about looking at how they managed to do it. So with my car, it was keyless entry, so you didn't have to put a key in. You had a little button on the door, which opened the door, and it was keyless ignition as well. So you just put your foot on the clutch, press a button, and the car starts up. You don't need to insert the key anywhere. So what these people do, or these people, what these criminals do is they'll have somebody standing next to the car and then somebody standing next to your house because everybody keeps their keys pretty much close to their door. And they have like a signal booster and you know the signal will be boosted from the guy standing in front of your door to the guy next to your car and then the car thinks that you're right next to it and then it will just turn on and then they can just drive away. So there was absolutely no glass, there was absolutely no force entry, the car was locked. But that is what they do. If you look on YouTube, there's literal videos of people like being caught doing it. Um, and in terms of the CCTV, it was found. And the guy actually saw my car going past. He trawled through hours of CCTV. So shout out to the, that guy who did that. At 1.56 a.m., my car got stolen. I can see it driving past. I don't know if I'll put the footage in here because it makes me sad. But I can see the car driving past. Um, and that was, uh, that was the last time that uh, it was seen on the road. And that was, yeah couple of hours after it had been parked up, I parked up about six o'clock at hers that night. And then a few hours later, it had all but disappeared. So obviously I filed a complaint with the police, um, and they, well not a complaint with the police, I filed a report with the police and the insurance company. And then the next day, somebody said they spotted it heading towards uh, somewhere that was kind of near me. So obviously I gave that information over to the police, um, but they didn't really do anything about it. So me and my mum drove around for six hours one day, just trying to find my car. We were looking down every road, every car park for about six hours. Uh, and sadly, obviously, we didn't find it. Would have been easy life if I did, but we didn't. Um, and as far as I'm aware, the police never actively did anything. Um, obviously, as soon as they stole the car, they've put fake number plates on it. So any camera they go through, the camera's just going to think it's a different car and they're not going to flag it up as a stolen car. Um, obviously, I gave the details of my car to the police and it's not conspicuous at all. Like, it's pretty obvious to see the goddamn car, man. It's so heavily modded. Where I live, which is the east of England, it's not a very, like, car-central place, car-centric place. There's not many modified cars around here. So the fact that that was able to be out there on the roads without being spotted is unbelievable to me. But anyway, had to go through all the insurance, and then insurance obviously gives you a figure which they say they're going to pay you out, and it's very, very low, so you say, no, that's not right, and you have to push that up, and then you have to push it up again, you have to keep going, and we agreed on a figure, and it was going to be paid out last Monday. Is it going to be paid out last Monday? I don't know what day it is. Yeah, literally last week on Monday, um, and I was waiting for a call back from a different car, which I was going to look at. So I was waiting back from a, from a call back for a car I was going to look at, and I picked up the phone, and it was the police, and they said, we found your car, and I was like, okay, Cool, but what state? And they were like, it's been used in two burglaries and was found abandoned overnight at about 2 a.m. And I was like, right, well, that doesn't sound like it's going to be in a very good condition then. So the next day, uh, the entirety of the next day, they had the car in the police pound garage thing and had forensics team working on it the entire day. And the next day, they said, I can go down and have a look at it. So the next day, I went down, had a look at it, and the woman was like, right, do you want to go through and uh, tell the investigator there which stuff is yours and which stuff isn't? So I was like, yeah, sure, let me see the car. So I went to see the car, and it was very sad. It was so filthy. I mean, I've, I've got some pictures which will hopefully be going up on the screen now. It was so filthy. No number plates on the front and back, obviously, because it had the fake plates on, so the real ones were, God knows where they're going to be. Dents in the side door, uh, the door handle was broken off, the wing mirror was broken, the steering column had been pulled out, the scuff marks everywhere on the inside, stains on the inside, and then the actual stuff that they stole was still in the car. So when I got there, there were two bin bags full to the brim of cigarette packets. We are talking like three to four hundred packets of cigarettes, which these guys have stolen from a co-op, which is like a food stop, food shop brand uh, in England. I don't know if it is elsewhere, but yeah, they stole 400-ish packets of cigarettes, two bin bags full to the brim, and then like 10 three-litre bottles of alcohol as well. And all of them were left in the car. And then also in the car, there was like a huge industrial like tow rope thing. There was also clothes, McDonald's wrappers, so these guys had treated my car like a daily driver because in the three weeks it took for the car to be found, because it was 
just under three weeks, it had driven 500 miles. And 500 miles where I live is quite a lot because there's not really many places you can go that's that far. So 500 miles locally and the car was never found until it was abandoned. It was only abandoned because it ran out of fuel. It had zero miles in the tank when I saw it. But they put 500 miles on it. They absolutely ruined it. They yeah, a lot of bodywork damage. Um, I don't know how they managed to you know, keep getting it started and whatnot, but there was USBs plugged into it, so I assume there was some sort of software or, like, programming they did to it. Um, and obviously the bodywork damage, my splitter kit would, was damaged as well, my um, body kit that was damaged as well, so I don't know how they managed to do it, I don't know what they used it for, I don't know if they were off-roading or what. Um, but yeah, that was really sad. As of yet, there have been no arrests or anything, even though there was so much DNA, it is hard to believe. But sadly, as of yet, no resolution to that side of things, but... Resolution in the site in the sense of uh, I've got to pay off my insurance. The car is no longer officially mine, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the story. A very very sad story, and like I said, you've probably been able to tell in these last few weeks that my energy has been a little bit all over the place. And some days I've been feeling really down down because uh, as you've probably been able to gather in this video, I put a lot of time and effort and money into that car. I did not do those mods uh, or just like. Uh, one search and did it. I put so much time and effort into researching and making sure everything was perfect and it was perfect. I never had any problems with it over 30,000 miles and uh, yeah, it all went to nothing when somebody decided that they want to take it and then use it in other crimes. So that is pretty much the story of how my car was stolen and then used in burglaries and the state that it was in uh, at the time it was stolen, which was exactly where I wanted it to be. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, then do let me know. Because like I said, this is the first time I've ever done a non-2K video. I haven't really known what to do with my hands because I haven't got a controller in it, but <laughs> it's the first time I've ever done one. So if you do enjoy it, let me know. And uh, like I said, if I do get another car, chances are I'm going to mod it again. So if you want to see me get a new car, it's not going to be anything fancy. But I'm not going to be getting a Lambo or a Port Come on, boys, that ain't me, man. I had a little fiesta. So I think it'll be another one like that, but I will be modding it up again, most likely. So if you, if you are interested in that, do let me know. That's going to do it from me today, boys. I hope you have enjoyed my sad, sad story. Uh, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.